what's going on guys, Wingsman here and welcome back to another episode of War Survival Let's Play and as you can tell by the title, today we are gonna have a little world tour specifically touring our little igloo village that we have over here I am really happy with the amount of the work and stuff we managed to make in these 10 episodes well, technically it would be 9 since this is the 10th one but I thought this would be a really nice idea so that way the new people that start watching the series can check out all of the things that we made so far and maybe decide to stick around, but with all that said, if you guys are still enjoying the series and want to see more, make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe if you're new, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Of course we have to start with the episode 1, and this is the first igloo that was introduced to our village, this is the normal minecraft generated igloo that we didn't add anything to it, you can see we didn't add or break anything, the ice is still right over here, and this is the reason we started our igloo village, and this was the first one introduced, and the only one that wasn't built by us by the hand, you can see this is our home sweet home, this is where we sleep basically, and you can see we have the generated bed right here, and we got lucky to have this little igloo spawned with the dungeon that are underneath and we have two villagers that we are probably gonna use to make a village later on you can see I spend a little bit of the time trading with this guy he is basically max level and I'm basically gonna be uh, trading some more stuff over here maybe even I get a little bit more of the nether wart and stuff but this guy is also a cleric over here but we didn't really trade much uh, with him but over here in the first episode we also made another igloo which was the storage igloo that you probably seen in the little montage at the start which is one of uh, my favorites because that's basically where we keep all of our stuff you can see this is the first igloo that we made by hand it's a little bit bigger than this one over here as some of uh, the others are you can see we have this uh, storage igloo right here represented by the little chest and inside as you probably guessed is made out of a lot of the chest and the barrels you can see we have a nice little birch floor over here with a little bit of the variations over here which looks really nice but this is basically where we keep all of our stuff and all of the barrels are basically filled we have uh, the stone types right here we have the grass the dirt the sand the gravel and stuff right here we have the different types of the woods right over here and right on this side we have the nether stuff like nether uh, quartz we have the little uh, nether rock right here and all of the other stuff like salt sand and magma blocks and not all of these chests are actually filled i know that i have this one with the mob drops right here this one should be the loot that we got from the nether fortress you can see we have a ton of the horse armors yet not a single horse and we also have a wither skull right over here and of course a nether ward now of course there was a little bit more loot like diamonds, iron, gold and stuff but I basically took that away. Well, right over here I should have a little bit of the ice, this is basically my ice chest. And I basically got all of this ice from the ice spike biome that we have near our original spawn and basically I was gathering a lot of it and converting it into the blue ice and the packed ice right over here. And I don't think any of the other chests are filled, uh, this one don't have anything and I'm pretty sure these ones over here don't and... What? I spent so much time actually mining for the resources because I thought I was out of resources but apparently they have been gathering dust over here for a few weeks. This is all of the ores that I got from the time I actually found the mine shroud where we have four spawners if I believe. We have zombie spawners, skeleton spawner and two of the, of the cave spider spawners. And apparently this is where all of my ores have been. We have 37 diamond ore over here. I literally thought we are completely out of any resources, but apparently this is where have they been cutting from us. Well, this is uh, nice to know, this is definitely a surprise to me, and we also have a few stacks of the cobwebs over here, which is amazing. I can't believe I actually have 37 diamonds and I thought I was completely out, but I guess we're gonna have to break this at the end of the episode. But that's basically it, a really nice little cozy glue, and this was the first one that we built. Let me just uh, quickly sleep and we can move on. This is also another thing that we did in the first episode. We have a nice little area where we can cook food and just kind of sit over here, got a little bit of the heat because it's definitely a little bit chilly here in the snow area. 
Now in the episode 2 we basically finished the storage glue, finished the interior and basically got some of this stuff sorted out over there and we also found some diamonds but we didn't do anything else but in the third episode this is where we built another igloo and added another igloo to our village. This is of course our fishing igloo and this is a really nice place to just kinda sit and relax. You can see we have the fire in the middle where we can of course cook some food. We, this is a really nice and cozy little igloo which I really like. You can see we have have some decoration with the biggest fish that we got over here and of course we have our god rod right over here you can see it has all of the stuff that we need basically and uh, this is pretty much what i use to get all of my books and stuff that we store right here you can see right over here i have some of the fish that it's not really cooked over here we have some of the cooked fish that we basically use as a food source these two over here i basically not filled but this one over here is for all of our enchanted stuff that we got the enchanted books that are not really that great and some of the others that we actually used we have some uh, bobs over here and some more fishing rods and right over here we have some miscellaneous stuff that we basically got uh, from the fishing like the insects the name tanks and uh, a lot of the saddles basically and right over here is where we actually go fishing you can see this igloo has a little backside right to here and this is supposed to be a really nice spot to fish because you know how in like frozen lakes and the oceans and stuff people usually just go and drill a little hole where they can fish and if you look closely you can see we actually have some fish right over here and this is basically where I just like kind of sit and basically fish for all of our loot and of course we can have up to three people fishing at once but of course I'm kind of alone. And Moving on to the episode 4 is where we built this little igloo you can see it's heavily guarded by these really scary guards and of course they are guarding our king frosty the snowman which is the king of all of the snowmen in the series and probably in the universe but he is the one that provided us with all of the snow that we needed to actually make this happen of course we have the gold block representing the king's igloo over here and this is an igloo that we basically started working on in the early stages of the series and basically we didn't have the ice at the moment because we didn't have the silk touch but you can see we have some ice spikes and stuff over here that were made out of the glass panes and I have to say this ended up looking really cool and a lot better than I thought without using any ice. Of course I added a little bit of the ice to the throne over here later on in the series but you can see we have red carpet of course leading to our king and we have a couple of the snowmen over here also guarding it. But the way this works is really simple we have our king frosty the snowman right over here and he's standing on top of the hopper. Right over here we have the magma block so that way he's not going to leave because he knows he is going to get hurt. Same way with these little guards over here they are basically surrounded by magma blocks that way they're not going to move because that would hurt them of course and we basically just sit over here and basically dig right over here and all of the snowballs basically ended up hooked by the hopper and end up in this little chest over here you can see these snowballs are gathering right there and that's basically how we got all of the snow but this is a really nice place you can see we have the little variation with the wool the carpet and the white concrete powder over here which looks really nice and of course a little bit of the ice packs over here at the ceiling of course the icicles and stuff i think turned out really nicely but we need to move on to the number five igloo that we made in our series and that's going to be the enchanting igloo right over here you can see we have a nice path leading over here and we also have some decorations and this is the enchanting igloo that is probably one of the bigger ones that we have and you can see it's looking absolutely amazing but of course the most amazing part is the interior right over here we have a little bit more of uh, the carpet you can see it's not really straight and i absolutely love this we have the enchanting table over here with the anvil underneath and you can see a lot of the magic is just kind of coming out of uh, the enchanting table and going into the sky and of course these ones over here underneath are supposed to represent the power and all of the magic kind of going inside of the ground and i think this turned out absolutely amazing you can see we have a little lectern with a little shelf over here we have some nice decorations and we have a couple of the stuff over here but the thing i want to show you guys is this little hole over here 
hopefully we're gonna be able to get it and this is the code that we made with the first mending boot that I got in the series I asked the people on Twitter I was basically joking around and saying that I should probably burn it since it was our first mending book that we got in the series but then I got a comment from dryfish that said I should probably put it on a diamond hoe and that's exactly what I did you can see it's named thanks dryfish with the mending on the diamond hoe that we are ne definitely never going to use and it's basically so its purpose like a little decoration right over here and I absolutely love it you can see this is looking absolutely amazing and I love the magic just kind of going around in the air and of course kind of going in a little floor so that was basically our enchanted igloo moving on to the episode 6 is where we actually made our first even number igloo and that was a little bit harder than you think because getting the shape right and everything was a little bit hard and the only reason I had to do it this way is because I needed to make the even number so I can fit all of the decoration and stuff that I wanted inside over here and we can see this is our zombie xp farm igloo and if we step over here this is the first bit of the redstone that we have just a nice little door over here to the main reason we use this door is to basically cut off the light sources because I wanted this igloo to be something like a dungeon style igloo and I think we managed to do that. You can see it's very dark and the only reason we didn't use the normal doors because they would let the light through and it would kind of ruin the effect. You can see we have some flickering lights going in the ceiling that's basically just done by using some redstone torches and all of the redstone uh, components just to kind of give it a gloomy atmosphere and the only light source that we used over here are redstone torches so you can see we have some nice uh, blood over here obviously I meant to say ketchup that's definitely not blood you can see we have our little scientist guy that's basically doing a little bit of the research on the zombies you can see we have two zombies right over here and they're actually named by you guys if you want to check this episode that's episode 6 so you guys can go and check it out and see how they got their name but we have Alfred the Hunter one and over here we have sent now sent probably needs a little bit of the explanation but as i said you can click in the top right corner to check out that episode but the thing you're probably wondering about is where exactly is the zombie xp farm you can see we don't have a spawner or anything like that over here but you probably guessed it it's behind the painting we have a little secret if we go over here to the right side we're gonna have a little bubble elevator that's going to take us down to our zombie xp farm right here you can see we have some zombies over here to kill and i can basically just go and basically kill them like this the whole room is actually made out of the blast furnaces because I made this when they were introduced and I think they look really cool. This is just the back side of the blast furnace and it looks absolutely amazing. But of course we have a couple of the modifications over here. First one is this button right here. If we press it it's actually going to dispense lava from these dispensers and it's on exact time that it's going to leave them on one hit kill with the hand or any other item that's not like a sword or anything because I have the spawner kinda a few blocks underneath me and they're not dropping the 23 or 22 blocks that makes them one kill so I basically use this lava to basically get them to one HP. And another thing that we have is these levers over here, this one is actually only one connected but this one is there to kind of match it just to add a little bit of the decoration but if we press this one you may be able to see some of the pistons over there, that's basically to separate these zombies from the ones on the top because when you actually press this button to get them to 1 HP using lava the other ones can just jump in and kind of ruin it because they are going to fall in when the lava is going to disappear and they're not going to take enough damage but of course I still have a few more things to work on this zombie farm specifically making them into the drown mob farm and find some way to actually kill them easily to actually also get the XP so that's something that I'm gonna have to work off camera and of course if you want to leave this place we have another bubble elevator right over here that's going to take us upwards and allow us to actually exit this place you can see it's actually located to the left of the little skeleton face because this painting is absolutely amazing for this type of the dungeon and you can see it looks absolutely amazing we have some of the new blocks over here and they just look really really cool but that's basically all there is for this dungeon igloo if you want to leave this we just have a nice little button over here that's going to open the door for us and we can just exit outside 
In the episode 7 we didn't really do any work on the igloos, we basically decorated this place, you probably noticed some of these ice mushrooms popping around and also all the decoration in the ground, that's basically what we worked on on the episode 7 and I think it looks absolutely amazing. And these trees over here are basically for the decoration, you can see they have some snow on these uh, leaves over here, even though the snow can't follow them, they're all basically placed by me because I just think it looks a lot better. But if you follow this path and go to the build that we made in the episode 8, it's right over here. This is one of my favorite builds so far, this is the nether portal igloo and it looks absolutely amazing. There is a little bit of the story behind this one, you can see we have the, the portal right over here. But you also notice that we have kind of a massive build going around it and let me just tell you this story. The idea of this nether portal is that all of the evil from the nether is trying to basically convert the uh, overworld. And the idea was to have the igloo trying to contain all of the power and all of the evil that's coming out of the nether portal. But with time the nether portal grows stronger and try to escape. You can see we have some tentacles going around over here and it also kind of infected the ground underneath over here. We have some nether wars spreading, some coarse dirt and some little... Void drifts basically spreading inside of the ground and the idea of this ice is that it's basically a magic ice that's trying to contain all of the evil inside of the nether portal and the side of uh, the igloo over here so it can spread the evil inside of the overworld right here so I thought that uh, looks absolutely amazing you can see it's just kind of going over the igloo and the tentacles to basically keep all of the evil inside as I said and this has to be my favorite build that I made so far and of course the inside of uh, the igloo is amazing because the nether portal you can see the tentacles over here coming out and going outside to basically infest the ground around it i think it looks absolutely amazing of course we have a couple of the void ribs over here and they look really cool one thing that i absolutely love about these tentacles is definitely all the glass panes the purple glass panes actually bring these whole tentacles and stuff to life it just looks absolutely amazing in mixture with the obsidian and i really like it so this is my favorite build let me know in the comments which one do you guys prefer but now we're going to go to our final igloo and the igloo that we worked in the previous episode this is the igloo from the episode 9 and the one that i was saying i'm going to build in the next episode since probably the episode 2 or something but that's actually our mining igloo right here and this one is also on the list of my favorites because just look at the inside of this you're probably wondering how can we actually go mining because this doesn't really lead anything well i'm going to show you that in a second well let's just take a second and actually appreciate this little room over here you can see we have a lot of the diamonds in different doors and this is just something that i absolutely love when i'm in uh, basically working in any kind of the cave you can see we have a lot of the different types of uh, the stone around and of course the different doors they just look absolutely amazing and one of the things that I absolutely love doing is also making these little cracks in the walls because they just add a lot to the decoration and of course we have some moss basically represented by these leaves over here we have the mixture of the oak and the birch ones and they look absolutely amazing by the way we get down to our mining area is by pressing this button and standing right here in the middle you can see it's going to take us down and it's going to close right there behind us but of course we have a little brush plate so we can exit this place right here now this chest and the crafting table are not supposed to be here there basically for me to kind of store some of the stuff that I had while I was going mining so this is just where I kind of emptied my inventory and used the crafting table for a little bit but you can see this room is absolutely amazing I only use the white box that include the quartz and the diorite and I think this turned out absolutely amazing we have some accents using a little bit of uh, the uh, blue eyes over here near little Quartz rim over here I think that looks absolutely amazing and over here you can see we have a couple of the stairs and some more nice decoration and we have this storage system basically all of the stuff that we would normally find inside of the caves like all of the different types of uh, the stones and all of the different ores right here you can see I have quite a few diamonds because I spent a little bit of time mining between uh, the episodes and I know it's been a little while since we had the let's play episode and I'm sorry about that hopefully we can actually change that but one of my ideas for this area over here is to have the automated storage so you can see we have a little bit of the space behind over there and I'm basically gonna put like a chest over here so we can store all of the different items but this is where all of the magic happens where we actually go and bind to find all of these resources you can see we have a really nice 
done all that leading to the level 11 where we actually do all of the mining and I tried to make this as realistic as possible you can see right here at the start because we are really close to the surface this is all fully ice and as we go down the the ground is supposed to be a little bit hotter because it's going to the center of the earth and basically it's going to kind of melt the ice and if we take this nice little minecart over here all the way down you're going to be able to see a nice little transition. So we have the ice right here and it kind of starts to melt over here until it completely disappears and this area over here was not modified by me this is just the normal terrain and this is the way it generated. I did want to at first to actually terraform this but then I thought it would look a lot better better if you just keep it as it is so you can see we discovered this little or chunk over here and some lapis right here and it didn't change anything except put a little bit of the lights underneath these staircases right here but you can see it looks really realistic and, and I absolutely love it I just noticed that I actually pushed the minecart so we have to run upstairs but that's kind of going to give us a little bit more time to check this out so you can see we have a little bit of the ice just kind of forming on the sides as we go up you're gonna notice a lot more kind of appearance because we are a lot closer to the surface where all of the snow and the ice are so you can see this looks absolutely amazing in my opinion if you guys like this uh, definitely let me know and let me know which one do you like better this ice tunnel and the whole storage igloo or the nether portal igloo they are definitely my favorites but I kind of like the nether portal igloo a little bit more because all of the different colors over there but this one looks absolutely amazing as well and as promised we are going to mine all of the diamonds up and see how many diamonds we can actually get because I totally forgot about this in our little storage igloo and I'm really happy that I actually did this world tour so we can actually find them because 37 diamonds ore is definitely not a really small number so I'm really excited to see what number are we going to end up with. So I'll just go ahead and grab all of these diamonds and we have some more right here and hopefully it's gonna be over the stack and we have stack and 12 this is absolutely amazing and just notice that our armor is almost dead we definitely need to upgrade that as well but you can see we have a lot of the diamonds and that's definitely not going to be the problem. But of course if we want to exit this place we have a little pressure plate that basically activates our slime block launcher and a little flash door that we have right here and we are back in the inside and the interior of the igloo. We can basically go outside and reach any place that we want but this is just the start of the village and it's definitely going to improve over the time because we're going to be adding different igloos for different farms and stuff but that's basically all there is for this world tour. So if you guys have enjoyed this video and want to see more videos for survival let's play make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe if you're new. If you think any of your friends would enjoy this type of content make sure to share with them but as always I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.